for the next three hours, uh, no, next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next day is, uh, we are, we are, I'm entitled to 20 minutes. Uh, this is my scope. Uh, I'll go through to see what this key are all about. Uh, what's the scope of this key uh, Then I'll introduce the actual content before we go to this. Uh, and what's the next step forward? Okay, virtualization is uh, one of the key pieces of technology and cloud computing. So, hypervisors and virtual machines are really very agile and dynamic computing environment. But as if many things in mind, right, the good thing does come with the side effects. So, it poses certain challenges and risks for the IT organization. So, the objective of this here is basically to, to deliver a set of guidelines and best practices. To address the security needs of post by virtualization technology that run this server based on uh, computer hypervisors. Okay, this is uh, the scope of the TR. Uh, you can see that uh, those, in, okay, those in gray like, on the center case is the scope of the TR. In essence, what we are trying to say is that we are here is based on x86 virtualizations, right? Although some of these virtualizations, less practices does apply for those hard partitioning uh, virtualizations. Uh, the key beneficiaries of this uh, here, uh, we have people from uh, enterprise info personnel, cloud service provider, as well as cloud users and partners. Okay, um, this slide shows the, uh, some of the different usage for uh, virtualization, some of the use cases. Uh, first is uh, server virtualization. For uh, example, that uh, you have an application server it's running 30% virtualization most of the time. Uh, so, given this slide, if you want to increase the use of the performance. So, essentially, it's to increase the collaboration of computing. So, Resources. The next one is, uh, well, sometimes you, you want to extend of uh, the lifespan of the application uh, running on the resilience uh, for viable reasons. For example, I, I have a friend who actually virtualized the Nobel 4 right, recently and they got it working on the virtualized environment. The, the application is uh, still running in the screen. The third one is quickly deploy VMs for cloud setup or from the field of power. Because VM is uh, very fast and very dynamic. You don't have to really you know, uh, start the installation process uh, of uh, OS and then start installing the applications. There are tools available for you to bring provision uh, your, your uh, virtual machines. Uh, the fourth one is really to improve software testing and practices, especially over multiple OS. The other category of uh, application is very on virtual desktop. Uh, uh, essentially, it's uh, the same kind of um, We have seen a number of, quite a number of uh, successful deployments of the same kind of environment. Essentially, it allows uh, a centralized desktop implementation that can project uh, the display to the last one of this virtual desktop. So it offers quite a very right, child environment for the enterprise. So having known that what are the typical use case for virtualization uh, areas, so let's take a look at uh, the risk management considerations for virtualization. So uh, someone say that once you go into virtualization, uh, that means you have to share. Uh, in essence, it's basically say that if you are in gardening now, right, and you have been growing, say, for example, papaya, and uh, you are going to virtualization, you are really doing on time, right? So, because uh, it creates a level of maturity in your management, because you have to really manage the on time in the correct manner, otherwise, it becomes a jungle, right? In essence, your, jump, your garden becomes a jungle. So, uh, the first point I want to raise is that uh, IS governance uh, applies in the newly virtualized environment. Just because 
you don't see boxes moving up in and out of data center. But boxes, uh, virtual boxes are being created every now and then in the market. So it makes it more important for the government's aspects for this socialized environment to be. Uh, the second point I want to raise is that uh, we should adopt the risk management process of identifying and assess the associated security risks for the appropriate controls. So in this slide, uh, the ISO 27001 uh, and ISO 27005 does have all these processes. But specific to this, uh, see, uh, we are looking into testing all the, uh, the risks associated with uh, socialization. <laughs> So, um, this is the, the process. First is uh, you identify the system for virtualizations. And second is uh, identify the new system due to virtualization. And you can also evaluate and indicate the security with the lightning code in the hand of constraints. Um, and first one, we also find that uh, typically in an environment where uh, in the highest organization, you don't do virtualization overnight. It means to say, if you are running a shop, an IT shop, you don't really do a 100% virtualization project across the whole platform. You allow the virtualized applications to go over time. Uh, and I've seen uh, organizations who does it, and you do it in a controlled manner because uh, your eyes personnel need time to get used to uh, management in terms of how to virtualize, how to manage server on the virtualized environment. They need time to understand some of the implications and the new processes. So that's the way that the gradual approach to which people will get used and at least change in the new processes of uh, managing servers in the virtualized environment. Okay, um, this here actually breaks the, the list into four categories. Actually, there are categories, but mainly broken into the first is the use of virtual machines. The second one is the, the use of hypervisor. The hypervisor is basically the layer in the below the layer. Third is basically the changes in operation procedures and others. Okay, I, I'm not going to uh, tell you the medication managers I first did before I was told. Otherwise, I'm here to promote the uh, the document and so you have to buy it before you, uh, you get to know the location and it's, uh, maybe just I uh, give, give a brief run through of some of these rules. First, uh, because everything is in virtual, once you virtualize the server, uh, everything is in virtual, so you bypasses some of the traditional control. For example, your data center, right? The security data. So, Previously, you had one big box moving in and out, and I'm sure uh, there are some control measures to make sure that the gap is not down to ensure that the wall is not right. But working machines, uh, essentially, is very social. Right? So, someone who has the means to create or instantiate the VPN without really going through the traditional physical process of doing the work. So you may encounter cases where there, uh, there are proliferation of VMs in your system, in your data center, and uh, for which are some of these uh, configurations are known. It could be very loose or poorly configured. So, and furthermore, there are instances also that the root the VMs uh, may consume resources also, and then we and that will be great system performance. Essentially, the group VMs, once you instantiate it, it actually consumes resource on the box. So, if you don't take care of it, essentially it's going to be great. All the applications that are sitting on the same box. And lastly, essentially, it's a vulnerabilities of computation <coughs> error with the unknowingly propagated. The second part is sensitive data within the VM. You see, because VM, VM contains uh, the data, right? So, if you have copies of so-called images, uh, 
can transfer in and out data center quite easily. The other network for the console or hypervisor is doing the latest content of the brand memory. So technology is very wonderful. You can actually create snapshot of your virtual server, including the RAM. Okay. Um, the other part about the impact of some of these uh, the safety data we use in VM is that safety data can be moved around easily with uh, the VM's company. Let's say that today is in box A, tomorrow is in box Z, and it doesn't know any where is it because once you, you easily you are able to shift VMs from one place to the other, you may lose control of where exactly is your machine running. Okay. And lastly, it's also that the malicious codes in images are, or snapshot may be easily moved around because it's so easy to move VMs around. I think the third point that I want to raise is about the lack of visibility and control of virtual networks. So what happens for this case is that if you allow this to happen, right, uh, you will be unable to monitor the traffic within the hypervisor as compared to the traditional network tools uh, to monitor traffic across the routers and features. So uh, we have seen cases like, for example, if you have virtual machines 1 and virtual machines 2 running in box A and if it's in the physical world, the next stage of this box is in the physical box. Then it goes through the traditional routers and features, right? Um, but once you virtualize it, it could be a case that the VM1 and the code really pop to run and bypassing the traditional controls, right? So you need to have some mechanisms to really safeguard it because essentially it really breaks separation of uh, the architecture. So, for example, some identifications control, I, I just, just one of them is to, you need to have a hypervisor to, with a meeting to monitor the gas and gas. So, so that the several tools are not installed to monitor, to monitor the communication between the units. Uh, like, for example, uh, this goes to you uh, one example. Uh, you have virtual machines, right, and you have antivirus. When you run your antivirus on the virtual machines or the hypervisor, um, so if you run on the hypervisor, in the case, you call it infection, essentially it's more efficient, right? It's very efficient because all the power coming in just can run. But the side effect essentially is that once you have a backup, for example, once you have a backup and you try to install the backup in another environment, then the assumption is that in that environment, essentially, is that the hypervisor would have the antivirus software that scans the file. But what if it's, if it's not provisioned, the antivirus will provision and start in the hypervisor? Then they say is that you're running infra or a virtual machine that does not have protection against the virus. But um, if you try to get the approach, it's actually the right to run antivirus in each of these uh, virtual machines. Um, well, it's, it's very traditional method because basically it's like a VM, you run each VM will have an antivirus software it scans. The side effect essentially is that you are scanning multiple versions of the software, for example. So there are pros and cons in uh, this, uh, this kind of approach. So, uh, the mitigation controls are in the PR. I'm not telling you the answer. Right. Okay, uh, the fourth one is a dormant and offline VMs. Remember, we said that the virtualization is a very wonderful technology that can do a lot of things. So, uh, so it's, it's likely that once you have this dormant and offline VMs, some of these VMs are excluded, uh, excluded from the essential security monitoring function. So, the last one that I want to say is uh, resource adoption. Well, resource adoption uh, refers to uh, the case where intensive, software intensive software attempts to resource resources in the physical server and 
So among other ways, he considered a risk related to changes in operations uh, and assess the risk of the how of service by the field. When using cell service software. So what happened is that he did the, the assessment. So there's no strong authentication. Uh, there's no correcting monitoring. So he arrived at the conclusion that the risk is high. So and then the primary uh, really the core business of the company is in is in a website for depends on websites and marketing. So that's a risk that you assign. So this uh, metrics are uh, is found in our case. Actually the, the case study is actually is that the key are at this metrics uh, issue uh, in a step by step manner, basically to do a risk assessment and how to go about doing that risk. Okay. If, you, if you notice that essentially the, this case is a risk line, you see the use of self service portal. So uh, I finished the, the, the content of the key file. Uh, we we will conduct more sharing of this key uh, with uh, others. Uh, we are planning more sharing. Uh, we welcome your feedback on this uh, virtualized key. Uh, we will do some changes as well, uh, depending on the feedback. Uh, we know that the virtualization landscape has been changing very fast because of the, all the costs of the landscape. So uh, we will incorporate all these feedbacks and then wait for our next revision. So the PR can be purchased on this website or this email. You know that um, the, we have a discount during this period. Right? Our PR is slightly cheaper than the on-chain one. The on-chain one is very good. It's not the same as the lower quality, but because we are very efficient and make the thickness right, it's uh, thinner than on-chain <laughs> But it's very concise. So these are the people that uh, contributed to this year and uh, we, have, we have one of our most active uh, members of our last year, right? Uh, He's one of our members that contributed very much to this year. Thank you very much. <laughs>